Well, good afternoon. I'm Father David. Thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time as we are focusing on Revealed to the Childlike. Now, this week is the first week of Advent, and it's a time in the liturgical season of the church when we focus our attention on the hope of the coming Christ. The purple banners come out, and we begin to light the Advent wreath candles, and I really enjoyed this here in my own house where we were able to get our Advent wreath candle out. We were able to get out the beautiful reflections that you have made throughout the year uh, for this Advent book and share in those prayers, share in that hope that Christ brings. And I think, you know, that's a really wonderful practice to have a special space in your home to reverence the divine, to bring your family together at the table, to light the candle, to focus in on those prayers. That is a blessing. It was a blessing for our family this week as we stopped everything to come to the table together as a family unit. And interestingly enough, in our Old Testament reading today, we see the prophet Isaiah is sharing this hope of Christ's coming and some of his prophecies include verses like we see in the Old Testament reading, Isaiah 11.1, 1, where we read this, On that day a shoot shall sprout forth from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. And I really like this one, and I like the idea of this blossom coming from a stump. You know, there's many ways a prophecy can be interpreted. But interestingly enough, we know Jesse was the father of King David. So this prophecy orientates us to the line of David as the place and the lineage from which Christ would come. And David was the greatest king of Israel, right? So what I really like, though, is how Isaiah uses creative and visual language really to reveal deeper truths about Christ, right? Isaiah's prophecy talks about a bud that would blossom and with that blossoming bud, the Spirit of the Lord would rest upon the Anointed One. So the Spirit of the Lord is then described as a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of understanding, a spirit of justice, a spirit of strength, a spirit of knowledge, a spirit of reverence. Now, what a wonderful grouping of gifts to be found as the budding flower blossoms from the stump. And a stump is what? It's a tree that had been cut down and, and maybe it was dead in its former state, but new life is literally springing forth from something that was dead. And allegorically, we could really get into this because it's also in Scripture compared to a calcified stone that opens up to reveal a myriad of new life and potential. And what beautiful images to consider as we contemplate the coming of Christ into our world, into our temple, into our awareness. And I love how the gospel hints, kind of, at how we as Christ's followers, might awaken to these hidden truths. So if we look in the gospel reading for today in Luke chapter 10, verse 21, we read this. <laughs> Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. And that's how I got our title for today's devotion, Revealed to the Childlike. Have you ever thought about what it is, you know, to be a child and what it is about a child that makes them more able, maybe, to see the hidden divine truths of the world? Truths that grown scholars miss in their deep grammatical studies? <laughs> Could it be that in focusing so much on the literal facts and the details of the story that we miss the bigger picture and the simple beauty of it? I think that's very possible. What do you think?
<laughs> you can put that down in the comments, but it was the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and all the learned men of Jesus' day who strained over the literal grammar and facts and words of the prophecies about Christ, but then failed to perceive Christ in their very midst and failed to awaken to his kingdom of love and compassion and mercy. The childlike, revealed to the childlike. So what does a child possess then that these great scholars and theologians did not? I think it's openness, it's wonder, it's imagination. A child not so heavily encumbered by his great learning putting him in the box of how he should think and see things, has a certain willingness, right, to embrace the unknown with faith and imagination and maybe even accept new ideas, kind of like these fish in my shirt swimming against the channel of all the other fish, right? I love this shirt. And, man, a child can take those new ideas and then hold them in his mind, right, and give them life and energy. Have you ever thought about that? So often as adults, our years of scholarly wisdom and formal training and being told how to see and view things can really shut down that whole creative process. But most of all, I think a child can accept and love honestly and easily and trustingly Many times, as I've seen little kids play together, it doesn't matter what color the kids are, whether they're boys or girls, when it's playtime and the imagination is flowing, all the kids come together in good play. So it's no wonder Jesus says this about children and those who come to him as a child would. I want you to look at Luke 10, verse 23, where our gospel kind of concludes the day. Jesus says this, and turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So what is our application for today? Be childlike, maybe? Let's kind of boil it down to this. Be open to new ideas and to the hope. Remember, this is Advent week of hope of what Christ can accomplish in you and through you. And don't limit it by the box that people want to put you in. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me today as we have looked at Revealed to the Childlike. Mm -hmm.